So now I'm using a very dramatic, I'm not using my normal um, leak check uh, fluid, my uh, true blue or my blue, um, oh shoot, I forgot the name of the stuff I use. Uh, I'm just using car wash soap here. So remember, this was wet and shiny, this is wet and shiny, this was wet and shiny, and I have it pumped up with nitrogen to 150 PSI. And in none of these situations where it was wet and shiny with oil, any bubbles come up whatsoever. I already did this once because I was trying to find you guys where these seals leak. But guess what? You know when these seals leak? They only leak when it's in operation, when they're at a certain temperature or pressure. And guess what? I didn't hit that certain temperature or pressure. So they are not leaking. So I can't show you anything. And this is a static pressure test. And static, even if you raise it up high, is not always the best pressure test. And all along this wet hose up there. So basically, nothing's gonna get found using this method. And I redid the inside at the evaporator and could not find anything at the evaporator. So this is gonna go under a vacuum and I have to fill it all the way up and run it through its paces in the cold line, the suction line needs to get cold, the high side needs to get hot, and guess what? I will probably find my leak there. I might then find my leak there. But we know it's good, so you would recommend this hose, but I'm just trying to find, right away I just I go, okay, you're, you're replacing this hose, you're replacing this hose, it only had 30 PSI, uh, but what I'm trying to do is trying to duplicate the failure mode at which these leaks leak so I could catch it on video for you guys and show you. Other than that, I would just cut it off right there and say, okay, Mr. Customer, we're gonna change these O-rings because we know they always leak. And we're gonna change this hose because we know it's leak. I don't even need UV dye. I don't need the refrigerant identifier uh, detector. It couldn't find anything right now. And, uh, and the seals on that expansion valve and the seals on this receiver dryer. Now you'd say most likely, it wasn't an empty flat system, so it didn't respirate in and out with atmospheric air. At this age, you should do these receiver dryers, but I feel real sorry for the customers with Subaru because this receiver dryer with that switch on it, factory OEM is somewhere like $300. It's a ridiculous amount of money. But I'm gonna say, Mr. Customer, you have an option. Or I'm gonna tell the service writer to tell the customer. I do feel sorry for them because of the price of this, but we could do the whole receiver dryer because it's a desiccant material that's way past its lifespan and we do the whole thing. But actually all what's leaking is these O-ring seals right here, or we can do that. I would like to be the perfect person in the perfect world and say every time, change a receiver dryer. We all know they're like $20, $30, whatever, $16, $60, no big deal. This is $300, that's a whole big different story. But we don't live in a perfect world. Another one is that leak right there. So expansion valve comes off and not just these seals here, hit the seals on the backside of the expansion valve to do that if you wanna get rid of all your leaks. This is a slower leak because it wasn't wet. This is a slower leak, but it does leak. These are quicker leaks because they had wet, shiny, wet, shiny oil was here. Wet, shiny oil was developing up on the hose here and around here and then these seals. But still, you just don't stop the job and sell those parts right now. We don't know if the compressor is damaged yet. We haven't ran the system because it only came in with 31 PSI of pressure. So that's why, and we don't know if the expansion valve is frozen. We don't know if it's plugged. We don't know if the desiccant material came apart and it leaked out and it plugged the expansion valve. We don't know if there's a leak on the condenser because it came in non-operating and it could have been in that mode for over a year and any oil stains going through a rainstorm got washed away so there is no evidence of oil on the condenser and there could be a lot of leaks on the condenser. We don't know that yet. Other than I am holding a perfect, uh, my nitrogen hasn't changed at all. It's been holding rock steady at 153 PSI and it hasn't even moved one or two tenths yet. So under these static pressure conditions, it's not leaking right now at this moment while being tested. So let's 
jump over to the fourth video coming up and we'll see what I find after I recover it and recharge it.